for much of my 20s, I worked at Southern California College, now Vanguard University, which also was my alma mater. And in my mid-20s, I was invited by the Vice President for Student Life, Dan Mortensen and his wife, Shelley, and also the Residence Life Director for Men, Kevin Umpress, to join them on a fishing excursion to Alaska, which, you know, I'm always up for an adventure, so yes, I'm in. So we took a commercial flight up to Juneau, and then from there, we took a little puddle jumper plane from Juneau to this fishing camp. And actually, there was no airstrip to land on, just an open stretch of beach. And so the, the pilot, who obviously is very experienced, kind of a bush pilot for in Alaskan terms, uh, landed that little plane right down on the beach and dropped us off not far from the camp. First time I'd experienced anything like that. It wasn't a fishing boat, but rather you would uh, put fishing nets out into the ocean right at the mouth of the river and as salmon came out of the ocean up the river to return to their place to spawn they'd get caught in these nets and then we would haul the nets up onto the beach take them out of the nets by hand put them on ice after we rinsed them off and then let the net back out into the ocean it was pulled out into the ocean by a big pulley that was anchored a little ways offshore. Um, but it was primarily manual labor. Probably did a good job of bringing the net into the water when it was empty. But it wasn't strong enough, powerful enough to bring the net onto shore once it was full of salmon. So Kevin and I, we would grab the line and just pull for all we were worth as we pulled this net onto the beach and it would be full of salmon. I mean, I don't know how many pounds each they were, but good-sized salmon. Well, it was physically exhausting. <laughs> really, really put the manual into manual labor. At night, we would camp in a little uh, tent with a frame right out there in the tundra, and then get up at the crack of dawn, get something to eat, and go out and fish all day long until dusk. <laughs> totally exhausted. And they caught 22,000 pounds of salmon. Our little group did, which I think equated to 36,000 or $39,000 worth of salmon. At the end of our uh, little fishing adventure, we were uh, given instructions how to get from the camp back to the main house. And it was several miles away, which was no big deal because we just crossed the stream using the rowboat and then took a three-wheeler down the beach for however many miles it was until we came to the cabin. Directions weren't difficult. The difficulty was we were exhausted, we were stinky, we were wearing hip waders, uh, and the two of us, neither one were very small, got on that three-wheeler and <laughs> we were giving it uh, all, it's, all it could take. So about not even halfway into the trip back, which is uh, towards dusk, the chain on the three-wheeler gave out, it just broke. So now we're stranded and we don't have a radio. No way to contact the camp uh, or the cabin. And Kevin and I looked at each other like, all right, what do we do now? Uh, hiking on the sand is hard enough, but when you're in hip waders, three times as hard or more, not to mention we were already exhausted. And we had been told that at dusk is when the bears come out of the woods, out of the tree line, down to the beach to do a little fishing of their own. <laughs> and what do we smell like? Oh, we smell like salmon. One of their favorite foods. Oh boy. Now Kevin and I weren't quite sure if we were closer to the camp or closer to the cabin. We were figuring we had to be about halfway. So we figured, you know, just well walk towards the cabin because hopefully, eventually, someone would realize we need to get back on time and they'll come and get us before the bear does. And we even joked about which one of us could run faster? Which one of us could swim better? Could either one of us outrun a bear? No. So I guess if I run faster than Kevin, then he's the meat, right? <laughs> so we're trying to figure out who's the faster among the two of us. And so we trudged on into the night. Um, I don't know how many hours we walked. It felt like forever. And finally, off of the distance, we did see this lone headlight headed our way. <laughs> you could sort of hear the drone of, a, of an engine and actually passed right by us. And Kevin and I were delirious. We we're screaming and yelling and waving our arms. Well, it was Dan, and Dan <laughs> saw us the whole way, but he was just giving us a little scare, teasing us, as if he didn't see us and drove past us. Well, 
he soon circled around, picked us up, and took us the rest of the way back, back to the house. Thanks, Dan. So we got back to the cabin safely. Got those giant hip waders off, which I've never worn a pair since then. Had a nice big mug of hot chocolate. And fell fast asleep. <laughs> Slept for quite a few hours through the night into the next day. Growing up in Montana, I had become quite prejudiced to believe that Montana was by far the most beautiful place in the world. And quite honestly, I had no proof otherwise. Until I got to Alaska, and that turned out to be uh, rivaling Montana in its beauty. And just the sheer raw wilderness of it all, which I loved.